again, this is uh, uh, Pastor Larry Moss at Living Word Church. Uh, welcome you uh, this very day on this subject, uh, the makings of a champion. Uh, before I minister, I want to uh, thank you for tuning in to, to listen to this message. Uh, I want to invite you to share your testimonies on how the Word is blessing you. Don't put it off. Write down how we are blessing you because it means a lot to us. You know, you can contact me personally at pastormoss at bellsouth.net. Very simple, pastormoss at bellsouth.net. Or you can uh, uh, go to the church website, livingwordchurch.faith. The website is livingwordchurch.faith. So we want to invite you to join us at Living Word Church where adults and children will be blessed. Service times are on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7.30. Or if you want to, you can call the office at 770-957-9872. Again, 770-957-9872. Well, let's talk about the Word of God and uh, the, the makings of a champion. Now, the Bible says that you are already a new creature. The Bible said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. One translation says he's a new species of being, something that has never existed before. So you are a newborn, you're a new uh, person in Christ. And also the Bible says in, in um, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, For God hath made him Jesus to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God. So righteousness is a fact. God made you righteous, so you are righteous. Righteous means right standing with God. And since you have right standing with God, we need to walk out righteousness. See, these things you already are. The Bible said that you have been made a priest and a king unto God. And, and But when it comes to champion, we have to be trained to be a champion. You are born a, a new creature in Christ Jesus. You are righteous in the sight of God, have right standing. And, and God sees you a champion, but you got to be trained to be a champion. What does it take uh, to be a champion? Uh, a, a champion it takes a vision to be a champion. It takes faith. It takes discipline. It takes diligence. It takes commitment. It takes determination. It takes dedication. It takes uh, being a fighter, a dominator. It takes being a terminator, and it takes a, a winning attitude of being a champion. See. Be what God has already called you to be, a champion. You know, see yourself as a champion. You know, uh, to be a champion, it takes all these uh, ingredients. It takes the vision, the faith, discipline. It takes dedication to be a champion. And all these professional boxers, you know, how did they become a champion? They, they, it, it, it's a way of life. They practice and they practice and they practice. Skaters, no matter what they do. The reason why they're very good, these dancers, the reason why they're very professional, because they spent hours upon hours and hours and months and months practicing to do that. Then they become very professional. Well, to be a champion in Christ Jesus, even though he sees you a champion, it takes training. you got to practice that. You know, uh, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living soul, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he has formed. Adam was appointed caretaker, boss over all living creatures, and all the garden was under his command. Adam had a job to keep him busy. He had a job to keep him busy. And uh, so I'm going to be using uh, from A to Z, alphabet from A to Z. So we're going to learn our ABCs in this message. And what did, uh, what did Adam lose in the garden? And what did he gain? In order to be a champion, we need to understand these things. Now, Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Now, God gave Adam two things in the garden. First of all, Adam already had his position, he had his position, and he had the authority to oversee the garden. So Adam had two things. The letter A, he had his authority. 
And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that you eat thereof, then you shall surely die. Now, with position comes authority. You know this, when you get a promotion, guess what? You have authority. You have more responsibility. Adam had a position. He was, uh, uh, he was a child of God. I mean, he was like God. He wasn't God, but God made him that way, uh, a man that's spiritually alive. God made him uh, and put him in that position to be over the garden. You know, uh, with position comes authority. All employers, a boss has authority, supervisors, office manager. They have the right to tell you what to do. I remember many years ago before I got involved in ministry, I went to work at a place in Oklahoma, and uh, it, it was called, a, it was a heat treating, Coleman's heat treating. And I went to work there. My brother got my job, got me a job over there, so I went to work over with him. One day, I, uh, on my first day on the job, I'm walking down the shop. I'm over here working in a certain area, and, and my brother, there's two or three guys was over there. My brother came down and said, okay, I, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. I'm thinking, who are you telling me what to do? I mean, you just my, you work here. You, you're my brother. Well, you shouldn't, because, well, Ken, you shouldn't tell me what to do because I'm under somebody else. Well, the guy next to me said, well, he is your boss. He is the foreman. I didn't know he was the boss there. So he had that authority to tell me what to do. See, with authority comes responsibility. You know, uh, the, what happened in the garden that day? First of all, Genesis 3, 6, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired, to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So they didn't follow the instructions. First of all, he had the position, he had the authority, he had the responsibility, but he didn't follow instructions. Now, though Eva was deceived, but the man was not. Adam was not deceived. Eve was deceived. Adam was not. Adam knew what he was doing. Adam is called the last Adam. Jesus, the first Adam. First and last Adam. Jesus is called the first and the last Adam. And Adam, uh, when Eve was deceived, when she partook of the fruit, that's when she died that day. Not physically, but spiritually. She became separated from God. Adam had not yet separated until he partook of the fruit. Then he became spiritually dead on the inside. Because you know they both lived many, 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 many years after that physically, but spiritually they died, became separated from God. And, and so therefore, think about this. Eve was God's creation. And Adam loved the creation more then he loved God. He loved the creation, Eve, more than he loved God because he partook of the fruit. He died also. You know, God so loved the world, he's called the first. Jesus is called the first Adam. And Jesus so loved the world that he gave his life for the world. Adam so loved Eve that he gave his life for Eve. But you know what? Adam didn't have to do that. But he did commit high treason and sold out and you know what happened. That's another whole subject within itself. The curse came on the earth. So A, authority. Adam had authority. And Adam lost that authority because it was given to the devil. Now, uh, notice Genesis, the third chapter, and, and uh, verse 23. Therefore, for that reason, because of that, as a result, the Lord God took him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence it was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the eve of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned uh, uh, every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So Adam had a bad day. Eve had a bad day. It affected all of mankind. 
what Adam and Eve did that day affected all mankind. Second Corinthians fifteen twenty two says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So in the first Adam all died, Adam. But Jesus is called the first and the last Adam, but in Adam, that the one in the garden, says we all died. So he lost his authority, and he is now with authority. He had authority and a position. He lost his position. We'll get to that later on the letter P, but he lost his position. He also lost his authority. Remember Luke 6, Luke chapter 4, verse 6. And the devil said unto him, Jesus, all this power will I give thee in the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And to who, remember when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness? When he was tempted in the wilderness, the devil came to him and said, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it, who delivered it to him, Adam. The devil did not lie there. It was delivered to him. When Adam committed the high treason and partook of the fruit and gave all that authority, to the devil, the devil right then, according to 1 John 4, became the god of this world. The curse came in to the earth, the curse of sickness and disease. It was delivered to him. But how did Jesus get the authority back? You know, Matthew 12, 40, First Jonah was in three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, where did Jesus go? In the heart of the earth, I believe hell. Why? To take our place and to get our authority back. He took the authority back that Adam gave to the devil in, in, on, in the garden that day. Notice what it says in Luke 16, 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angel into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his now, the rich man, in the hell, he lifted up his eyes. So he had eyes in hell. Beat in torment so he can hurt, burn, suffer in hell. And seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. So he had a tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. Hell is a spiritual place of torment. There must be a total sacrifice on the cross and in the hell in order to get this authority back. Amen. And Colossians 2.15. Now, with what I'm talking about in today's message, there's a lot that's in details. I'm not going into details. I don't have so much time. Just kind of, you can study it for yourself and get all the um, words what God is saying here. Colossians 2.15. And when Jesus was in hell, took our place, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly triumphing over them. Now what did uh, Jesus says as Jonah, the Bible says Jonah was in the uh, belly of a well three days and three nights, so the Son of Man shall be in the heart of the earth. The heart of the earth. Why was he there? To took man's place. If, you, if we had no sacrifice to take our place on the cross in hell, then you would have to go there. But Jesus had become the slain lamb. He had to take our place. Now, what did he do? The Bible says he disarmed. The different translation says he disarmed the spiritual rulers of authorities and authorities. He shamed them publicly. He stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham or illegal authority. He stripped the rulers and authorities of their power and made a public spectacle of them. He put them open to shame, glorying, glorying over them in it. He had exposed them uh, uh, confidently in open show, triumphing over them in it. Notice, and the hostile princes and rulers, he shook off from himself and boldly displayed them as his conquest the act or process of conquering. Jesus defeated the devil for us. 
He's took away the authority. Remember, Jesus says there in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give unto you power or authority. Now remember, the devil took this authority from Adam when Adam gave it to them in the garden. He took this power, this authority that Adam had. And Adam became separated from God. He could no longer walk in the cool of the day with God. He, he lost his fellowship, his relationship with God. And Jesus said, all power of the enemy and nothing shall I have uh, and over, over the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your name is in the book of life. Now, you have been empowered. That means to give official authority or legal power, a capacity or a sanction to act on someone's behalf, to authorize. You, as a child of God, now have been authorized with this authority. You have, been, you have your position back. The Bible says Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, and you are seated in your position with him. Luke 9, 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Notice what it says in Philippians 2, 9. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, Jesus, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Father God has raised Jesus to the highest position in the universe. Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. And Jesus says, all power, all authority that Jesus has. Now, all power, all authority that Jesus has had been invested in his name, and that name had been given to the church. Now, God sees you as a champion. Now, until we learn the fact that we have this God-given authority, and that we have our position back, we can never be a champion. You have to have a winning attitude. See, God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The more knowledge you get, the fact that you have this God-given authority and that you have place in the position that was lost in the garden. The authority was lost in the garden, but thank God we got it back. The position was lost in the garden, but thank God we got it back. How do I know that? Because behold, he said, I give you, unto you power and authority to tread on serpents and scorpions. And all the power of the enemy, nothing shall by any means hurt you. You have this God-given authority, and you have now become a son of God. He said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Now, so to be a champion, we've got to understand from A to Z what was lost, on the letter, the first letter, A. And, and so, uh, matter of fact, talking about that authority, you know, Matthew 18, 18. Now listen to it. Matthew chapter 18, 18. Now a lot of times people uh, that don't believe in this authority is because they haven't been taught. Uh, you, just because you don't understand, you say, well, I never heard that. I never heard that before. Well, just because you don't, hadn't never heard it before, there's no sign it's not true. It is true. You just haven't heard it. And, and, and so the reason why people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they hadn't heard it. So you got to hear the right messages. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, talking about authority. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I'm talking about learning to be a champion. You need to learn that you have authority and what you bind shall be bound. In other words, what you bind shall be bound. Heaven is backing you up. Now, I went to different translations. It says the same thing, but different wordings, but the same message. The Living Bible says, And I tell you this, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven, and whatever you free on earth will be freed in heaven. Uh, New Living Translation says, I tell you the truth, whatever you forbid on earth would be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth would be permitted in heaven. Amen. 
Now, let me just say this, and uh, I don't want to argue with you. Don't argue with me. Don't criticize me, but listen to me. People say that God is sovereign. Yes, he's sovereign. And they say that God is in control. If God is in control, let me say this. If God is in control, he's got this world in a bad mess. If God's in control, all these people dying in other countries, all these kids dying, babies dying, adults dying, parents dying, and, and all these, these mean things that's taking place, and babies are being slaughtered, and, and, and women are being just all, no, 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 no. Uh, God is in control if we're in control. The Bible says if we who are called by his name, if we humble ourselves and seek him, turn from a wicked ways, and pray that he'll hear us. But see, people are wicked. But thank God we got people that's praying right now. Prayer changes things. I know the Lord told me one time when I was praying, he says, as long as you're in control, I'm in control. That made sense. God's in control. See, what I, one translation says, what I allow on earth shall be allowed in heaven. What I stop on earth shall be stopped in heaven. That tells me that it, it's up to me. It's up to me. Now, uh, you say, well, it's appointed, that, it, it's appointed once that man die. Yeah, that's true. But as far as the timing, I mean, if, if I want to shorten my time, if I want to shorten my time in life, I can. I can, I can lengthen my life. The Bible says if I attend to his word, with long life will he satisfy me. There's so much here that we need to learn. And I don't know at all, but I thank God for what I do know because I'm healthy today. I'm going to be healthy all the days of my life. You say, well, if, it, if it's the Lord's will. Sure, it's the Lord's will. He said with long life will he satisfy me. Now, God is in control if our people, and a lot of times, the more people are praying, the more people are taking their place in intercessory prayer, the more people are walking with God, more God is getting more in control, and things will turn. That's why things don't turn around slowly, because the, everybody is saying God is in control. Well, God is in control as long as we let him stay in control. Amen. Well, God is in control of your life, but you go out there and, and do stupid things like get drunk and have a head-on collision and kill somebody. Was God in control? No. God was not in control. Things happen on this earth. Jesus says, in the world, you're going to have tribulations. Don't, there's a book that Brother Hagin has, I think it's a very good book called Don't Blame God. A lot of times people blame God, blame Him, because the reason why they say God is in control, they just don't know. They don't have the answers. I've got the answer. The Bible said the devil comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. The devil, a lot of times, is in control of certain things because the way people say he's in control. No, no. i tell you what. The message Bible says, take this most seriously. A yes on earth is yes in heaven. A no on earth is no in heaven. God's word translation says, whatever you imprison, God will imprison. And whatever you set free, God will set free. The Bible in basic English says, whatever things are fixed by you on earth will be fixed in heaven. Whatever you make free on earth will be made free in heaven. In other words, let me listen to me, people. Listen to me. You have this God-given authority. Quit blaming God for the bad thing that's taking place. God did not take your baby. The devil came to steal, to kill, and destroy. God did not rob you of your job. The devil comes in. God, there's some things that God has to allow because the Bible says what we allow on earth will be allowed in heaven. Amen. I, I used to have, I, I used to have a, a heartburns. Uh, uh, for years, I had heartburns. I carried Rolaids with me all the time. I took alka seltzers, you know, <laughs> flop, flop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. I took those alka seltzers. I carried Rolaids with me one time. But thank God I got a hold of this authority. This has been many, many years ago. I got a hold of this authority, and I got to think, you know what? I don't. Every time I eat something, I will get a heartburn. It was miserable. I, I'm taking Rolaids. I lived on Rolaids. And, and uh, I had them for years. And, and uh, then I got a hold of the God-given authority. I got a hold of it. And I said, and you got to be, be specific when you pray. One day, and there's sometimes you don't pray, but sometimes you got to say. The Bible says, who shall ever say unto this mountain? 
So I said, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan, I come against you right now. It is not God's will that I have heartburns every time I eat. I'm going to take authority over this. So in the name of Jesus, I said, I said, in the name of Jesus, I will never have. I mean, I was very upset with the devil. I said, devil, in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave me alone. I command every I body you come in line. In the name of Jesus, and every, it seemed like every day, it seemed like about 2 o'clock, it seemed like every day, especially 2 o'clock, uh, 1 or 2 o'clock, I would hit, get this heartburn every day. And I said, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I will, I, I will not have a heartburn at 2 or 3 o'clock, which it was. And, and sure enough, at 2 o'clock, I believe it was 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock, I didn't have it. But it came at 3 o'clock. And, and so, I, and it made me mad. I remember on my job, I was a machinist, and as my machine was running, and I stood there and I said, in the name of Jesus, it made me mad. You got to be mad at the symptoms in your body. I said, in the name of Jesus, I want to stand in the presence of God the Father. I want to stand in the presence of Jesus. I stand in the presence of all the demonic forces that can hear my voice. I stand in the presence of demons, devils, principalities, powers, might, dominion, angels, anyone that can hear my voice. I make a decree this day in the name of Jesus. I will never have a heart burn as long as I live. I take authority over this right now. I command my body to come in line. I command my body to function properly, do what it's called to do. In the name of Jesus, I will never, never, never have a heart burn as long as I live in the name of Jesus. You know what? It's been between 30 and 40 years, and I have never, I have never had another heartburn. Why? Because what I allowed shall be allowed. See, but what I stopped shall be stopped. I stopped it. And God says, what you allow, heaven will back you up. What you stop, heaven will back. Now, you may say, I never heard that before. Well, because you never heard it, no sign it. it's not true. Yes, it's true. You need to hear the word of God that what Adam lost that day, he lost that authority in the garden. But thank God you got it back. The world English Bible says what things so every, what things you will release on earth will have been released in heaven. Another translation says, I believe that provides, what you allow on earth will be allowed in heaven and what you stop will be stopped in heaven. So who's in control? Who was in control of my heart, Mark? Who was in control of that? I was. I was. I stopped it. It's been 30 years or plus more than that. I never had one. Why? I stopped it. What you bind shall be bound. What I'm telling you the truth, God's word works. Authority doesn't beg. Uh, uh, authority doesn't ask. Authority doesn't, uh, uh, authority commands. You command the devil to get his hands off your back. Get, get his hands off your heart, your lung. If you believe that, if you're big enough to believe it, you can have it. Now, it seemed like I just got started, but I will continue in the next lesson on the makings of a champion. Praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless them right now. Open the eyes of the understanding of this God-given authority. In Jesus' name, amen. See you later. Thank, Thank you for joining us at Living Word Church. Living Word Church McDonough is located at 185 Tunis Road, McDonough, Georgia, 30253. In-person services are held Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Children's services are available every service for ages birth through 12 years old. If you would like to financially support this ministry, you can do so by using the Give Now button on our website at livingwordchurch.faith or by texting the word GIVE and the amount to 770-212-9591. Your financial donation will help us continue to support our community and do all God has called us to do. To find out more about Living Word Church, check out our website at livingwordchurch.faith. Thank you again for watching. See you next week.